Call the meeting to order. <clears throat> Will the clerk please read the meeting statement for this evening? This is a meeting of the Vernon Township Council for Thursday, October 15, 2015. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided to the public and the press on January 4th, 2015. It was posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10 colon 4 7. Thank you. Will the clerk call the roll, please? Council Member Kadish? Here. Council Member Lynch? Here. Council Member Murphy? Here. Council Member Wetzel? Here. Council President Rizzuto? Here. Would you please stand and join me in a pledge to our flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this moment, uh, I would like to ask you for all to just remain standing, I'm sorry. For a moment of silence for the victims of the shooting at uh, Umpqua Community College recently. <clears throat> Thank you. This evening we have a proclamation for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Councilwoman Murphy, would like to read the proclamation? Okay. Whereas breast cancer is a serious threat to women's health across New Jersey and the nation, and whereas increased public awareness of this disease, its risk factors, and its symptoms may save lives as women across New Jersey learn to recognize the warning signs of breast cancer, and whereas breast cancer is treatable when detected early and prompt treatment can significantly reduce the suffering and deaths caused by this disease, and whereas the Sussex County Chronic Disease Coalition and Project Self-Sufficiency are organizations partnering to promote breast cancer awareness during the month of October through the Susan G. Komen's annual Tie a Pink Ribbon campaign, and whereas the pink ribbons have become an increasingly recognized sign of courage, support, and hope for a cure. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Township Council of the Township of Vernon that the month of October shall be proclaimed Breast Cancer Awareness Month in the Township of Vernon, and the displaying of pink ribbons during the month of October is a wonderful way to encourage citizens to stand together against this <coughs> disease. October 2015, Breast Cancer Awareness Month in Vernon Township, signed by uh, Victor J. Murata, Mayor, Patrick J. Rizzuto, Council President. Thank you. You're welcome. May I have a motion to open the meeting, the floor to uh, public comments? Motion. Motion made by Mr. Lynch. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Kadish. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. The floor is available for comment. If you have a comment for the council, please come to the podium and address the council. Good evening, Gary Martinson, Vernon. Um, there won't be another council meeting before it, so I'm going to use it. I do every year. Um, we're having our annual festival uh, on October 25th. It's a $3 gate, $2 of it goes to veterans, one to the Veterans Cemetery, one to VFW. Uh, it's pagan and heathen, so I guess councils can go. <laughs> Have a good Thank time. you. <laughs> Are there any other comments for the council? Yes. Uh, first time here, so uh, Eric Card, Holland Lakes. Um, I'm just in a council because I've had a history of problems with septic systems being put on my my property. Um, went around in 02, septic system was put on my property, long and short of it, kind of settled out of court, but I ended up costing me almost 20000 to get everything removed and taken care of. Um, now we have a new neighbor, same property, same border to mine. They had went through the permits and the process, had a septic system installed. They installed the wall to their septic system about eight inches on my property. Um, been round and round, fighting with um, members of the township uh, between zoning, planning, building. We don't have the help no more. 
keep getting retold. I got to go to the health department, go to the health department. They tell me it's a Vernon problem. It happened here under their administration at the time. Um, I don't know what to do about it. I know I have a liability of it because I got to worry about it. Um, there's other code violations going on that I'm not even going to bother addressing. But I need to know how do I get protected because this is not once, this is twice. Had a personal conversation with Gina Siason and Adam Bolt, which were the two that handled it the first time. The second time they, assist, they assured me everything will be done to the letter of the law and I'll be fine. That's not the case, okay? And I don't know how that means that it's an undersized lot, non-conforming, that the codes that apply to the septic system solely based upon the individual who's approving the system and they're not held accountable, liable in any way, shape or form. I have to throw money again at an attorney to rectify this problem. I'm a little confused. This is an administrative problem. The mayor is here. I don't know, Mayor, could you, would you like to comment on this? Or no. Perhaps? I'm sorry? No, I would not like to. I would the situation is rests in the hand of the Sussex County Health Department. Um, I have been in communication in writing with them. They, uh, Mr. Card's right. They keep telling them to come back here. Um, my understanding, and maybe Mr. Erson will comment on it, uh, in terms of what happens when the, when the township steps away from the health department and it, in fact, puts the responsibility on the county. Um, but uh, I'm very aware of Eric's situation. I have followed it. And to be frank with you, I, uh, I understand his frustration. Um, but at this point in time, our building department and our zoning and uh, planning and zoning have no authority in this particular issue. So that's what I know about the situation at this point in time. John? Yeah, so I, I would, I have no memory whatsoever of it, but I was apparently involved in the 2002 litigation with Mr. Card. Correct. You were my attorney representing me at yeah. the time. It's time, time flies. That's, so that's fine. Memory was better. I, I don't remember any of the details of it. Um, so I, I can't comment on the situation with specificity, but I will say that as a general matter, the, uh, the, the applicant who files for a septic permit is required to get an engineering plan. Uh, the septic is required to be plotted on that plan. Mm -hmm. And then when it is completed, the engineer is required to certify that the system is built as depicted on the plan. If I may, which engineer? Our engineer or the the applicants? applicants engineer? Applicants, okay. Yes. And so, you know, the I, I agree that the responsibility to enforce this lies with the health department, uh, and the liability on not just this situation, but any situation where a septic or or anything uh, that's that's built. You always hear the phrase "as built." That's the important of an importance of an as built, whether it's an addition to a house or in this case a septic. Mm -hmm. uh, the engineer is certifying, putting their professional license on the line, saying that the plan was built uh, according to what was drawn on the paper, and clearly what was drawn on the paper was not an encroachment onto your property. Correct, and that's, that's my whole issue with the matter is, is the fact is, is there's a property stake within a foot and a half of that wall that anyone that, especially an inspector, would have clearly seen that you're, you're approaching past that and you could have, you know, either tightened up the regulations on it or the fact of the matter is, is that as built piece of paper, I'm very familiar with it because I had paid for a copy of it. The problem is, is the paper says one thing, but the location is another. And um, I've also addressed the fact that the wall is not only constructed illegally because it's not constructed properly according to Grinnell Block that if you go over two feet you're supposed to submerge one block in the ground with a, with a footing so it supports the wall. The wall has th upwards of three inch gaps in it. The wall has a five inch sag in the middle and it's bowing even more on my property. You know, I mean, I don't know what to do. I mean, it's a liability for me, besides the fact that it's just on my property, which I, I, I still don't know how we can't change regulation somehow to make 
uh, an official that is supposedly verifying this and protecting me as a citizen is not held accountable or liable because I shouldn't have to pay for anything. I shouldn't have to go to court. I did nothing wrong. Excuse me. Would it be is is it appropriate for the council to recognize the situation and the fact that the mayor has worked on his behalf, but nothing has happened for the council to send a letter uh, on behalf of a resident to the uh, health department asking for uh, an address of this con situation? Yeah. So. I um, I, I don't know whether it makes a difference whether it comes from the council or the mayor's office, frankly, but the, um, the, the, I think the bottom line is if the health department isn't addressing it, um, you know, perhaps the, the, it, they sh someone should go to the health department's supervisors. I'll leave it to your thinking whether it's uh, the council. This would typically be an administrative matter, a day-to-day -day matter that the mayor would address, but uh, perhaps the um, county administrator uh, would look into it um, and there there may be an avenue through the County Construction Board of Appeals as well uh, I don't mean to interrupt but I have um, this is, I've been arguing and fighting over this for nearly five years um, I have addressed the county about it and they appointed me to their attorney John forget Williams. John's last name Williams yeah he told me it's my problem and I need to address it to an attorney to have a judge her, her, hear it and this is where I'm struggling because now I'm at a dead end where if I don't want the liability or I don't want the problem of this besides the fact that I pay for my property and don't have all of it um, I have to pay uh, how do we how do we correct this where I shouldn't have to pay for not doing anything wrong. I already got hurt for 20 grand on it once. Now I got to go through the whole process and nothing against uh, John and whatsoever, but I mean, I, I tried to seek your uh, legal advice and I understand we can't do that. The next attorney in line wants a $10,000 retainer. I don't know what to do. Zoning don't help me, building don't help me, I point out you know, the wall is not constructed properly, it's a liability, nothing. I don't, I don't know how to move forward through this. So, so again, I'm commenting on this sort of, because I don't, I don't know anything about the Correct. current situation or right. the, the current um, specific facts. But, I mean, the only two things that can happen, the health department is the entity that issues the permit to uh, approve the mm -hmm. septic. So either they revoke that approval, that's mm -hmm. the only avenue. Okay. Uh, or uh, they're pushing you to treat it as a trespass between on a property line between two neighbors. Correct. And those are the only two rev, you know, remedies. Um, so unfortunately, I think the uh, this council certainly has no role. Um, you okay. know, the the administrative office can try and help you with the county. But if if every person in this room, every person up here, voted right now to to uh, revoke the health permit, they don't have the authority. Um, I, it's, it, and it's, it's specifically revoking the approval of the septic um, for being in the wrong location. That sounds like a possible remedy here. So, right. so you know, the only thing that I could suggest is, uh, um, you know, I can certainly uh, help, help the mayor. Um, we'll have conflict counsel involved, I'm sure, um, to give further advice as to what the town's options are. Uh, but the town putting pressure on the health department, I think, is the only remedy that the town can help you with. Okay. Well, I just, I just, um, uh, I guess the only follow-up I would have on this is, is how do I either start some sort of legislation or something to, to change the facts that. But the legisl I, the legislation's there. I mean, you know, the the, pl the what was <laughs> built is supposed to comply with the permit uh, and with the drawing, and it certainly didn't depict it encroaching on someone else's property. It, it, mm -hmm. That would never be approved to even move forward. I, I understand. I mean, the remedy's there. The person who you need to actually pull the permit and revoke it is, um, and again, I don't know the facts, but is declining to for whatever the reason. Okay, but w what I was trying to address is I understand the remedy's there, but the remedy there falls back into my hands to try to push forward to this. My. Uh, my feeling on this is, is if, if um, the inspector 
is the person who's inspecting this to make sure that this doesn't fall back onto me as a problem. Why are they not held accountable? Why do they get a free pass? Because, and ultimately, they are the ones to make the decision. And, and you know, I also understand if, if I build a house and I built it according to code and, you know, somebody missed something, the inspector inspects it and says it's okay, he's still not liable if the thing falls down either. So I, I, I just want to put more accountability on the people that are being paid to supposedly protect me. Excuse me, Because John? it's not fair. Excuse me, John, not to send him to another entity, but would it, would it help if he actually went to a freeholder meeting <coughs> and, oh. and, and addressed it to the freeholders because the, the, you know, I mean, the administrator, the administrator is there at the meetings. So it's something that if, if you're not getting any just, uh, you know, I any recourse. With, I agree with Mrs. Murphy because I think that if you tell them that the, the county attorney told you that it's your problem, you got a good case to let them know that he said that. Why don't yeah. we do this, Mr. Carr? You've heard suggestion from Thank you. Councilwoman Murphy and Councilmember Lynch uh, regarding this, but also you, this is an administrative matter, and perhaps you might want to talk to the mayor, you know, set an appointment and sit down with him. Okay. And maybe you know a two-pronged approach might help you. Uh, at some point, you might be forced to resort to uh, some type of uh, legal uh, yeah, that's what I'm hoping legal avoid. representation, yeah. in which case I, I, I sympathize with you. And if your case does hold water in court, then of course you can, you can sue for costs as well and mm -hmm. uh, see what goes on there. But at present, uh, you know, if we were to do, use our own good offices, all we could do is, you know, send a letter and it could <laughs> either be accepted or rejected. So, I mean, we have no enforcement power. Okay. On that. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for hearing me. Appreciate you all the time. Thank you. Are there any other comments before the council? Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. Good evening. Jesse Palladini, and uh, tonight I come representing the Vernon Township Historical Society. I'd just like to announce to this governing body and to everybody who's in the room that the Vernon Township Historical Society is sponsoring a mayoral debate next Wednesday night, October 21st, at Vernon Township High School at 7.30 p.m. And um, we hope that many people will attend. I just want to briefly tell you about it. The debate will be about 90 minutes long. It will, um, all of the questions were given to each of the candidates. In other words, we said specifically, questions will be about township finances, infrastructure, and the township's future. Each candidate will have an opportunity to introduce himself and tell a little bit about himself. Then each candidate will have an equal amount of time to respond to the same questions, and then they will have uh, an equal amount of time to um, conclude by saying a little bit more about themselves. If there is enough time, we'll take questions from the audience, but we just wanted to let you know that the Historical Society trustees unanimously voted to sponsor this debate because we think it's important and because as a 501c3, we have the ability to do public information. The society does not sponsor any candidate, does not endorse any candidate. It's just merely an opportunity for the public to be able to hear their candidates' viewpoints. Okay, so October 21st, Vernon Township High School, 7.30 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any additional comments? Edward Ditch, <clears throat> uh, Pleasant Valley Lake. I've been attending council meetings now for several years, um, probably three or four. I notice a certain amount of negativity. If you read the papers and read online posts and things like this, you'll notice a, a certain uh, negativity theme, if you will. <clears throat> I moved here 
about 23 years ago, about 1993, 1990, December 1992. Um, brought my wife up here um, to pretty much what she described as nothingness. <laughs> <laughs> For the sake of comedy, um, she went to the, she tried to go to a, uh, a mall, so to speak. <clears throat> and she came back and she said she didn't find one. So it got her thinking after crying for about three weeks straight, <clears throat> realizing that there was nothing here because she grew up in East Hanover, the strip mall capital of the world, um, that uh, it just got me thinking that, that uh, I decided to write, do some research and look at a list of where we've come from and where we're going to as far as uh, Vernon Township. Now, considering 1992, those were the days of the contentious Burger King and the uh, historical relocation of a home and, and whatnot. So I came up with this little list and I thought it was actually quite interesting. <clears throat> Besides the Burger King, we ended up with, uh, well, we moved on towards a beautiful Maple Grange Park, uh, a new Appalachian Hotel, uh, a new Red Tail Lodge, a new Highland State Bank, a new helipad and helicopter transport, a new urgent care, um, numerous roadway improvements like uh, 517 in Maple Grange, Ro Grange Road, the re-engineering improvements to Breakneck and Canisteer, um, numerous historical designations uh, and the 8th Scenic Byway to Vernon Township, uh, a functioning sewer system, an expanded animal control facility, uh, a profitable recycling center, uh, and now a Dollar General, a CVS, uh, and a future Taco Bell. <clears throat> no strip malls, which will make my wife happy. However, what I got to thinking was, out of all of this recent development, in spite of severe restrictions by the Highlands Act, which apparently consume at least 70% of our township uh, yeah. properties here, um, among all of these restrictions of development and hindrance to the commercial rateables, the mayor was still able to deliver four years of financial tax and stability to Vernon Township. So I say to those naysaying people that write these articles and um, editorials and things like that, I know for one I'll be voting for continued progress and stability and voting for that man right there. Vic Murata. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and if I may, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Um, on a Saturday note, my mother-in-law was diagnosed this month um, with breast cancer. I just wanted to, because I'm going to send her the link, wish her very well. Bevy, everything's going to be fine. Love you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Are there any additional comments? <coughs> no matter how many times you come up here, you'd still get nervous. Good evening, Doreen Edwards, Highland Lakes. Um, I have to say my heart goes out to this gentleman who's having the problem uh, with the septic issue on his property. Um, that's horrible. Um, I know that since we lost the, the health department in, in our town, there have been some repercussions from it, and that's just something else that came out of it. Um, I wanted to say this weekend as I was driving down 515, I noticed a lot of traffic, and I don't know if most of the commuters were staying in town, or they were driving through, going into Warwick, or to the Apple uh, festivities around town, but. I also looked at the Meridium on 515 and I said, oh, what an embarrassment. So I know, Mr. May, you have a lot of things on your plate and I know that's a county um, issue. So I have taken it upon myself to call the county and I talked to, the, well, the administrator put me off to somebody else. I didn't actually get a chance to speak with him. The secretary took the call. So then they said to talk to Walter Crump, I believe his name is. So I would like to tell all the residents who may be here and listening, Keep on the county, you know. If there's things that they should be doing, especially to keep our area clean, we are going to be one of the scenic byways in town now, and that's a great uh, thing for this town. We need to have a little bit more attention come our way, and that's how I feel. And I agree with the previous gentleman. I think Mr. Murray is, Mr. Murray is doing an excellent job, and I thank you for that, keeping the taxes 
on a municipal level, you know, at, not at an increase, at a decrease. So thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Are there any additional comments? Seeing no further comments, I'll ask for a motion to close the meeting to the public. Motion. Motion made by Mr. Lynch. Second. Second. Seconded by Mr. Kadish. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> motion carries. Uh, Mayor's report. Yes, Mr. Mayor? President. I think it's apropos that <clears throat> of some of the items that I wanted to discuss with you this evening, one of them is the Sussex County Health Department. Mr. Card is absolutely right. Um, the health department at present is telling people who call them with issues having to do with uh, their responsibilities, call Vernon. Frankly, there is no, since June 30th, when the administrator, um, Mr. Herb Yardley, retired, the county has not appointed a head of that department. The responsibility, I was told initially, um, actually by Mr. Yardley before he left, was going to be handled by a gentleman by the name of Eric Siebold. I know Eric from the days when I was a freeholder and he was working in the health department at that time. Um, but apparently, um, he doesn't have any authority to do anything. <laughs> the service has gotten very, very poor. As a matter of fact, I have had residents in my office telling me that it's taking between two and six weeks to get a simple review of where a septic is in relationship to the requirements that we have that if an addition goes on, the septic has to be located and the like. Two to six weeks for what should take, at best, a half an hour of a sanitarian's time. I wrote to the new county administrator, Mr. Gershik, and to be frank with you, I do believe I copied all of you on that letter. It was, the tone and tenor of it was not, um, it was typical Murata, okay? And to, to be frank with you, yesterday, yesterday, I received a letter back from the county administrator indicating that if I called his secretary, I could have an appointment. It must be nice to be that busy. I believe right now the health department is in, completely, in complete disarray. I know this from conversations with mayors from other towns. It's not just Vernon who's having the problem. The entire county is having the problem. And I'm not looking, Eric, to dump it on the county. But as I listened to what you said and I reviewed the information that I had, what Mr. Erson said to you is true. The county has the authority to make that decision, and they just won't do it at this point. And the, and the proper public forum, as Mrs. Murphy pointed out, is to take it to the Board of Freeholders. And to be frank with you, if you decide to do that, I'll be happy to, to go with you and, in fact, share the data that I just referred to in terms of the number of people who have been experiencing this since June 30 of, 30th of this year. Um, I would like the opportunity to talk with you about it. So please, let's do that. The second and third and fourth issues, I believe, are a little bit more positive. Um, for those of you who have traveled uh, around the, the Municipal Center most recently, particularly to our rear parking area, you will see that right ha what has risen out of the ground is a very, very uh, nice impound building for the Vernon Police Department. Um, we had set a goal that that building would be done before the snow flies. We're going to surpass that goal. It is being built by Vernon Township DPW employees. I'd like to share with you and the public why that happened. We did <coughs> bid the projects, and we did get prices in from, if my memory serves me right, three or four contracting companies to erect that building. The actual cost for us to do it with our own people is $40,000 less than the lowest bid that we got. And with the experience that we had with our DPW people building the animal control edition, the quality of it, <clears throat> the savings of it, we decided that we were going to, in fact, do that again. It's working very, very well. This morning, the Ford Foundation Company moved its equipment on site and will be, over the next five working days, um, erecting the forms and pouring the concrete for the base for our salt storage shed. 
Um, we anticipate, <clears throat> based upon the pre-construction meeting that has <coughs> taken place with the contractor building that dome, that, in fact, it will be done um, near the end of this month, near the beginning of November, and certainly will be in service in time for us to use across the bulk of the winter. Um, for the people who are architecturally interested, um, the decision we made was to um, select evergreen colored shingles so that the building will not be an orange um, teepee sticking out of the, out of the <laughs> ground. Um, we look forward to it. We've already, in our, in our budget um, discussions, looked at the needs that we will have in order to be able to be sure that we have the right amount of salt in there. It is our plan to use the present salt shed, we're not going to take it down, but use that as an area where we can prepare our mix of salt and road grit so that we no longer have to leave it outside during the winter time. Some distinct advantages in doing that. It's hard as concrete. And most importantly, I think, and most exciting, is that on Monday morning, coming, the Reclamation Incorporation will be on location at the entrance to Lake Wallkill and then begin the reclamation of Lake Wallkill Road. That project uh, is uh, projected to take about, weather permitting, uh, 10 working days. And I know that we've talked about it in the past, but I think this is an appropriate time to describe what is happening there. When, <clears throat> excuse me, when um, we were successful in gaining the DOT grant thanks to Senator Oroho going to bat for us after we'd been turned down for the second time on money in Lake Wallkill. Uh, the first thing that we decided to do with the advice of our town engineer, Corey Stoner, was to uh, send our DPW people over to Lake Wallkill Road and we cored the road. And what we found when the corings were done was kind of surprising, at least to me. Um, I'm sure to some of the um, other folks who have been in the town longer than 40 years might be aware, but apparently the, the construction of Lake Wallkill Road was a series of, I guess, beginning um, oil and stone, and then over time, layers of asphalt were laid down. For the length of the road from Lake Wallkill entrance to Owen Station Road, the average amount of asphalt on that road was about nine inches with no sub-base under it, no stone, no crushed stone, none of that. And so, uh, frankly, with the help of, of um, former DPW director, uh, Ed Snook, who brought to our attention a company called Reclamation Inc., this company will be there with um, a piece of equipment that apparently chews up the existing asphalt, mixes it, and puts some kind of a, an a glue on it and lays it back down as a sub base. We will have a solid sub base of approximately six to seven inches of compacted um, um, sealed asphalt over which we will then lay three inches of asphalt. That road, as I said, we will start the construction on Monday. There are going to be inconveniences and interruptions to traffic on the road, it's, it's just, it's going to happen. It's going to be a temporary inconvenience for what's going to be a permanent improvement. Um, actually, the bids came in low enough for us to go a bit beyond Owen Station Road, and we're going to do that. <coughs> and we will finish that project in 2016 with money that has been approved from the Federal Wildlife Refuge. At this point in time, they've approved 400000 and we've made an application for 2015, another 200,000. If we get that, the 600,000 from the wildlife will pay the cost of finishing the, the road. And just by a sidebar, while that's going on, we are making application to the New Jersey DOT, which we're required to do, to put a 10-ton weight limit on that road from the New York State border to its length where it meets the county road. And the reason is very simple. We know that the amount of truck traffic that comes out of Orange County down Lake Wallkill Road, across Owen Station and on down 284 to the aggregate company just north of Sussex. First of all, the speeds that have been, have been there have been tickets handed, and the speeds that have been seen there are above the, the, the speed limit. But more importantly, the weight that's being carried on those trucks is what really has done the damage 
on Lake Walk Hill Road north of Owen Station. We're going to take every effort to, in fact, stem that. And I think lastly, what you need to know is what, what caused it was Orange County, New York passed a law that you couldn't run a truck on County Route 1 over 10 ton. Uh -huh. Okay. And so the truckers, um, understandably so, they, you know, they have to make a living. They found a way to do it, and Lake Walk Hill Road has taken the punishment for it for some time. We're going to take steps to not have our new road destroyed by overweight trucks. That concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, Council, the mayor brought up a situation regarding the health department in the county. One of our residents brought it up. Uh, we, if I go back to 2011, when the question was raised regarding the sale of the Homestead Act, the council voted at that time not to involve itself because it was truly a, a county issue. However, what seems to be happening now, uh, the largest township in the county, the, uh, the township that speaks with the loudest voice, uh, and, and pays a significant portion of the taxes uh, to the county is not being heard. And uh, while I can't, I don't really want to bring it up this evening because it wasn't set for the agenda, I'm going to ask the clerk to schedule this for the next meeting. And I think it becomes uh, necessary for us to bring it to the attention of Freeholder, correct, freeholder Director Crabb and the other freeholders. Uh, I, I think they've forgotten about Vernon. I think they have um, yesed us for uh, their, our support, but when the necessary uh, support in terms of helping our citizens comes to, uh, comes to bear, that uh, we're overlooked. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it's necessary that this council uh, address this problem and while our only resort may simply to be a resolution, I think we should make a stern, if so, I think we should discuss the type of resolution and put it out for discussion and if uh, approved, uh, move from there. So uh, with council approval, I would like to uh, have the schedule for the next meeting. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank okay. you. Please schedule it for our next meeting discussion on this matter. I think it's necessary that uh, it be brought to their attention as uh, bluntly as possible. Um, all council members have a copy of the minutes of our regular meeting of September 14, 2015. Uh, may I have a motion to have those minutes placed on the floor for consideration and uh, approval? I'll make that motion. Motion made by Mr. Wetzel. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Murphy. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Um, aye. Um, any questions or comments? Not roll call vote. Council Member Davis? Yes. Council Member Lake? I have stayed. Council Member Murphy? Yes. Council Member Wetzel? Yes. Yes. Items for discussion. Uh, all council members have received a copy <laughs> of the best practices questionnaire <coughs> required every year by the state. Uh, we have in attendance for this this evening Mr. Zuckerman uh, and Mrs. Yetter. Uh, are there any comments regarding uh, the worksheet that was passed out to each of us? And if you'd like to discuss or address any questions to staff. Be happy to answer any of the questions. Thank this you, is a required Mr. form that every municipality must fill in. Uh, we're also required to present it to the governing body for what we're doing tonight for uh, comments and discussion and then submit it uh, tomorrow to the state of New Jersey. If I may tag on to that, Mr. President, this particular exercise has a direct impact on the state aid that Vernon Township receives from the state of New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And the, we are required um, to, in fact, be able to answer yes to a certain percentage of the questions that are asked each year. And those of you who have been here know that each year the questions change. <laughs> yep. 
um, which basically means that this is a tool used by the state to force Vernon and all other municipalities to in fact implement these kinds of issues via the question. And if we don't answer yes the correct amount of times, a certain percentage, then our state aid begins to get reduced by a percentage. And so uh, I think it's important for everyone to understand that uh, sometimes you see things that, that get done or are, are happening in town and you wonder why. I do too. Um, and this is this exercise and this document lends itself to that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any comments from? Uh, well, just a question. Uh, let's take 18, for instance. Why is it color coded red? That's from the state. That's what we receive. It's colored like that. In other words, that's a question that the state had for us? Certain questions can have a yes, no. Certain questions can have a yes, no, not applicable. And certain questions can have a yes, no, not applicable. But most of the non-applicables are are only if it's it, it falls into one category, like the municipal mm -hmm. uh, cars, etc. The code that comes from the state is on the last page. Okay. Yeah, I know. And it describes that's their color coding from the state. But I, they have to do with permission and non-permission. I mean, it's just, to me, it's not very clear as to what they're asking. <laughs> welcome, welcome. We struggle with it, Dan. Sometimes you say yes and it's a no, and sometimes you say no and it means a yes. So the questions themselves are a little difficult to decipher. And they'll ask, you know, are you limiting your sick pay, pay to retirees? by a certain date, but if you're restricting it by an amount, that's a no, even though you are restricting it. So we don't really know what the state is looking for in <laughs> certain questions. You're getting, mm -hmm. you're doing something that is financially sound, and, and, but it's a no. Right. So. It's almost as complicated as a financial report for candidates. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> the good news for us is we've got enough yeses that uh, there is no, there will be, should be, no deduction from our state aid. So when they send this to you, the color code's already there? Yes, yeah. it is. And number um, six, I don't know if it's something we should discuss about, we have to answer no every year because it's saying, does your municipality require its elected officials to attend on an annual basis at least one instructional course? Now, I believe most of you are already doing this and yeah. we provide money in the budget for it. But it's not required. I don't know if there's any way we can require it or put it as well, part of the all, all, all the council would have to do is uh, make a motion and, and pass a resolution um, to create a policy that all uh, elected officials attend at least one course per year. And I know elected officials can attend them at different places, but your risk manager will also come here and present uh, a educational opportunity that would suffice okay i think that's important for some for to have just i mean if it doesn't hurt if everyone goes at anyway yeah. why don't we schedule it Our, for next meeting? Happening. Could, right could and it, it would be better a resolution for you for next meeting? Uh, meeting you you really don't need that. to no? okay no we, we, so, we've so attended three already i mean yeah, yeah. what i was going to say is uh normally the word required is the one that that kicks us out it makes yeah. us say no even though you won't do it Is this a continuing number? Is this question appearing regularly? Yes. Every year I think it's to our benefit. To you could make, oh, my point was that because, um, uh, you know, typically we have issues whether something's on the agenda or not on the agenda, but because this was on the agenda as a review of the best practices, um, it naturally follows that if you wanted to entertain okay. this, you could make that motion now, that it's uh -huh. the policy of this council uh, that all the elected officials attend at least one educational uh, training relating to municipal government each year. That would give us a yes for next year. All right. That would be the motion. Why not for this year? Mm -hmm. It would give it to you for this uh, year if they if voted you do it yes. For this year? Yeah. If we were to do it tonight, the answer would be yes tomorrow when hey, we. Right. When we How about right. inclusive of on site training from uh, the appropriate personnel? Sure. The way I phrased it is it's broad enough that it could be at League of Municipalities, <coughs> it could be here with your risk right. 
your risk manager. It could be at a, at a regional a league of municipalities uh, uh, event. There's there's a lot of opportunities. Who would like to make the motion? I will. Motion is made by Mrs. Murphy. Is there a second? I'll second, I'll second it. Seconded by Mr. Lynch. Any question or comment? On it? If not, I'll ask for a roll call, please. Council Member Kadish? Yes. Council Member Lynch? Yes. Council Member Murphy? Yes. Council Member Wetzel? Yes. Council President Rizzuto? Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. One more point. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you need any more? I can go on to the next one. If you like. <laughs> I know you've already you've already shot me down with the next one <laughs> that I had. Mine was uh, number 23, which is actually, I know that it says the, the, the township follows the state statutory requirements um, for the, uh, is that the one for the pay to play? Mm -hmm. And I know I've mentioned it before of, of us having one a little more similar, a little more strict, something similar to Andover's. Um, I brought it up a couple times, but it's pretty much been left <laughs> unaddressed. Okay. Uh, anything else? Can we consider the matter as being addressed? Okay. Do we need a, a roll call on this? Or? No. No? Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. Thank you. Thank you. So moving on to the next order of business. Consent agenda. <coughs> this is authorizing a fee for a mailing of tax notice sales. The township authorized an electronic tax sale at its last meeting. In accordance with the rules of the same three notices must be sent with a fee of $25. This uh, resolution authorizes that fee. Resolution 15-168, acceptance of a performance bond from United Water, New Jersey, for water main connection, uh, interconnection, isolation and extension work on uh, Route 94 and Church Street in Vernon Township. United Water has submitted a bond <coughs> for the water main work they are doing. This resolution formally accepts the performance bond. Resolution 15-169. Resolution of the governing body of the Township of Vernon to accept a donation of real estate located at block 132.03, lot 17. The Township resident has offered to donate this property located at Halls Hill. This resolution, resolution authorizes the municipal attorney to conduct a title search on the property and if the title is clear to effectuate a deed of the transfer, for the transfer. Resolution 15-170, authorizing change order number one, contract for the construction of asphalt pad for uh, Vernon Township DPW Salt Dome. The Township is constructing a salt dome and awarded a contract for same on, a, on September 14th. The additional material is required for the asphalt pad. This resolution authorizes a change order number one for the additional material. Um, this is due to the increased uh, circumference on the uh, base of the pad. Uh, resolution 15-171, authorizing placement of signs in various locations. Uh, the Viking Club, the club enforcement officer uh, has, the, the code enforcement officer has advised that the Viking Club has requested placing signs throughout the town uh, to promote their mattress sale fundraiser at the Vernon High School. This resolution approves the placement of those signs. Uh, resolution 15-172, Chapter 159 resolution requesting approval of revenue and appropriation, amending the 2015 budget as a revenue and appropriation of $25,000. The township has been awarded $25,000 for the Highlands Plan conformance grant with the, uh, from the state of New Jersey. This resolution authorizes the insertion of those monies into the budget. Resolution 15-173, authorizing placement of signs in various locations uh, for the St. Francis de Sales Church. The enforcement code officer has advised that St. Francis de Sales has requested 
placing signs throughout the town to promote their tricky tray fundraiser at the church. Uh, this resolution approves the placement of those signs. Finally, resolution 15-174 is a resolution of the governing body of the Township of Vernon authorizing the execution of the amendment to the Municipal Shared Services Defense Agreement, the MSSDA. Earlier this year, the Township joined a shared service for the defense of the COA obligation. This resolution provides for an amendment as the original service provider, Dr. Birchall, is no longer available and the township will be using a consults solutions. May I have a motion to adopt resolutions 15-167 through 15-174, uh, place it on the floor for consideration. So moved. Moved by Second. Mr. Lynch. Seconded by Mr. Kadish. That was the other way around, Mr. Kadish. I'm sorry, Mr. Kadish made the motion. Mr. Lynch is the second. Should I abstain on that? Abstain. Okay. Uh, I will abstain on resolution 15-173. Please let it be known. Uh, are there any other comments? I, I have a question on uh, 15169. Mm -hmm. We're doing the title search. Uh, the, the township's paying for the title search? If you pass this resolution, then yes, the township and, would, would do the title search uh, and, and would pay for it. And, would pay, and what is the cost? Just A few hundred dollars. Um, I'm going to estimate 300. And I'm just, because I, is this located in Lake Glenwood? This yes. Halls Hill? Yes. That, I guess I was just curious of the, it says it's a benefit. I was just wondering, like, wouldn't it, is it something that the lake community would, doesn't want? I mean, because it's a private it lake there. It may very well end up in their hands. Um, the gentleman made the request simply because he and his wife have reached an age uh, where it's becoming hard for them to own it. The only, there are people who are, are, are proud of their, their record, and the only way that they can um, do anything, they've tried to sell it apparently um, unsuccessfully. They don't want to let it go into tax foreclosure and go through that whole process because right. they know that that's the next step. Right. Stop the taxes because they can't afford it anymore. And so they asked whether or not the Township Council would take it as a donation simply to avoid um, coming to the end of their life with that kind of a record, that kind of a besmirchment of their record. That's right. basically... And, and I'm like, pretty much asking because, you know, somebody will bring up that there's a cost involved for the town to take the donation. So however, however, there's a cost involved if they don't pay their taxes exactly. and we foreclose on it. Right. So... So, so you, typically with these donations, you can't uh, predict every one, but you want to accept donations where there's a, an opportunity to put the use to, uh, to put the, the property to a municipal use, uh, or uh, where you could turn around and sell it uh, to a lake community and adjoining neighbor on the open market if it was big enough, um, and make money. There's no restrictions mm -hmm. in taking the donation. Okay. Right. Just like I said, just wanted to put on the record because if, if it comes up, it's asked and answered. Sure. Okay. Are there any other comments? Now I'll ask for a roll call vote. Councilmember McDavid? Yes. Councilmember Lynch? Yes. Councilmember Murphy? Yes. Councilmember Weston? Yes. Council President Rizzuto? Yes, with the understanding I am abstaining on Resolution 15-173. Agenda, which is extension Thank you. There are no reading, first readings of proposed ordinances. <coughs> we do have a second reading. Ordinance 15-24, an ordinance. The Mayor and Council of the Township of Vernon in the County of Sussex, State of New Jersey, providing for the municipal consent of the Township for the United Water New Jersey Incorporated to provide water service to blocks 263 lots 1, 1.02, 1.03, and 1.04 in the Township of Vernon and for the laying of pipes and the installation of other utility facilities as may be necessary. 
United Water is purchasing the water system from DM Borstead Water for the water services at Viking Village. The ordinance gives permission for United Water to install or repair water pipes if needed, although none are currently anticipated. Uh, may I have a motion to open the public hearing for a public hearing for ordinance 15-24? I'll make that motion. Motion okay. made by Mr. Lynch. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Kadish. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Meeting is open to the public for comment on this particular issue. Do I have anybody wishing to make comment? Seeing no one coming forward, may I have a motion to close the meeting to the public motion. on this issue? Second. Motion made by Mr. Lynch. Is there a second by Mr. Second. Kadish? Yes. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I just have, may I have a motion to adopt 15-24 for consideration? So moved. Moved by Mr. Kadish. Is there a second? Second. So Seconded by Mr. Wetzel. Are there any questions or comments on this issue? No, I, I, I want to question the sign for St. Francis de Sales. Oh, we kind of passed by that. Well, I just saw now it's November 7th. November 7th is not a Friday. Oh, maybe we have to notify them. <laughs> oh. November 7th is a Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. I'm sure they'll be suitably embarrassed. <laughs> well, 48 signs all over the place. I would yeah. think so. Uh, maybe, the, maybe the clerk could make that notification. Yeah, I'll call Tony now. Okay, thank you. Very good, Mr. Wetz. Uh, Mr. President, I'm going to rescind my motion. On? On the water company. Okay. Mr. Kadish has rescinded. Is it. there someone? I just realized I might have to abstain. Okay. I'll make that motion. Motion made by Mr. Lynch. With the change of the motion noted, are there any comments? Yes, the second is Mr. Wetzel. Yep, I second it. Oh, gotcha. Uh, may I have a roll call, please? Councilmember Kadish? Abstain. Councilmember Lynch? Yes. Councilmember Murphy? Yes. Councilmember Wetzel? Yes. Council President Rizzuto? Yes. To adopt with noted. Thank you. Uh, council comments. Uh, Mrs. Murphy. Oh. Uh, the uh, one comment I do have is um, on the, uh, the the fire departments. Um, I know that a resolution or uh, was was uh, had, you had to come up with a resolution with the fire departments. Uh, what was that? The resolution is that, um, first of all, um, the issue of whether or not the fire companies had been notified, while there was not a direct letter to them, they were notified in many ways. And so I would suggest that there may have been some misunderstandings on both sides of the issue. After a discussion of all the things that came to bear, I told them that uh, after November 1st, we have the opportunity to make budget transfers that would come before the council. I will be bringing uh, a, a resolution to you to ask for the money to be transferred from those accounts where there are surplus funds still. And uh, we also agreed that we would in fact right, raise all four and both of the ambulance squads back to the uh, dollar amount from last year. Um, but I also think that it's important as I report to you the resolution uh, that the public know that what caused this entire situation, um, not what caused it, but what contributed to it, is that agreements that were made in 2012 uh, concerning the continuance of a $35,000 stipend to each of the fire companies and the ambulance squads was predicated upon, as you will recall, the township was moving into upgrading our entire communication system and moving to high frequency and, as you well know, <clears throat> and the travesty of that um, and its involvement with the former um, fire marshal who uh, actually in the middle of it was forced to resign um, left us with a conundrum. And the conundrum was this. 
the radios that had been purchased under the FEMA grant didn't actually meet FEMA specifications. They were perfectly usable for our purposes, but they didn't meet FEMA standards. And so with our new fire marshal having up, come on board at right about that time, his, his experience, he was able to in fact repurpose that FEMA grant to be used to purchase turnout gear and breathing apparatus from the FEMA grant. You also will recall that in that year we had uh, put in our capital budget money to buy the turnout gear. Well, as it turned out, the radios actually were paid out of that capital fund. The, the necessary paperwork and resolutions went before this council, and but the fact of the matter was that the $5,000 increase that had been agreed to between your mayor and the fire companies for a period of three years was to be used to offset the cost of buying the new radios that they would need. But in essence, what happened was they got that $5,000 three years in a row, but they didn't have to buy them. We ended up buying them out of that bond issue. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Compounding the situation, of course, is at the present time, three of the four fire companies have new chiefs who did not sit in on the negotiation conversations that took place in 2012. So there was lots of misunderstanding. We had a frank conversation about um, who was responsible for what party, and we came to the agreement that I would bring to this council after November 1st a resolution to, in fact, restore that 5000 for this budget year so that fire companies and ambulances who had counted on that money um, and made commitments for it were not going to be put into a situation that was embarrassing. And so that is the resolution of it. When we get to November, you will be seeing uh, that resolution, and I'll be asking you to, in fact, approve it. If you do, they'll get their 5000 If you don't, they won't. And that'll be the ambulance and the fire? All of them. We, we, and that, frankly, is an administrative decision. The fire companies did not talk with me about the ambulances, but I felt, in fairness, if we're going to raise the fire company back up, the fire companies back up, we should do it for the ambulances, too. And what happened to those radios? What happened to the radios? They're in the hands of the fire company. Oh, they're being used? Oh, yes. They are, yeah, all brand new, high-frequency communications, yes. Tuned in to what we did in the in the uh, dispatch center and the um, tower up on the top of uh, Hamburg Mountain. Yeah, Hamburg so, Mountain. So they were reprogrammed to work because uh, they won't need in the future to get like in the near future to change those radios. No. But because they were able to change the frequency, there was a. Yeah. No, it wasn't a situation of reprogramming, Gene. It was a situation that the specification in the FEMA grant and I'm. Uh, I'm going to say model P25 mm. radio. Did I get the number right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was luck. Um, but at any rate, radio P25 was required. However, the, pre the fire marshal at that time um, didn't implement that. The purchasing agent at that time didn't implement that. By the way, both of them are gone, not necessarily because of this, but they're no longer here. And the fact of the matter was, after the radios were bought after the radios went to the fire companies, went to the police cars, went to the ambulance squad. After the entire thing was done, when the FEMA did an audit, they said, you didn't buy, you, 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 what you bought didn't meet the spec. We are not going to reimburse you. And that's when, at the point in time, Mr. Tosta was able to work us into a situation that resolved it. We didn't lose any money. Everything got bought and paid for. It just simply came from different sources. Does that answer your question, Dan? Mm-hmm. Mrs. Murphy? Okay. okay. Mr. Kadish. Uh, Sunday I'm attending the ALS walk on the bridge over the Hudson, which is really kind of a majestic view uh, in support of my friend uh, Roy Halverson from Branchville. And if any of you care to join. It's a, a fundraiser and, and really a kind of exciting day. It's going to be about 41 degrees in the morning, so wear something heavy. Yeah, be moving quickly. Okay, thank you. Mr. Lynch.
Today, a good friend of mine turned 95 years old, Pat Rizzuto. <laughs> Today is his birthday. Everybody oh wish him happy birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I have nothing else. <laughs> 95. Huh? 95, huh? Jeez, he's still doing Wear it well. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. It does work doing the roast. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Mine passed. <laughs> Mr. Wetzel. Uh, I only have one thing uh, to go along with the beautification of Vernon. Uh, can we do something about the missing sign in McAfee, Welcome to Vernon, that's disappeared? You know, I've been working on that now for a year with the New Jersey Department of Transportation. You see, that sign was knocked down by the snowplow trucks on Route 94 in the middle of a storm, not last winter, but the winter before. We have actually received the same kind of treatment from the DOT that Mr. Card has received from the county. And to be frank with you, I try not to criticize other branches of government, but in both cases, Eric's Eric case and in this case, we're getting the bums rush. So in the 2016 budget, we will be looking at repairing it ourselves and then deciding whether or not it's worth fighting about or not. But we have been stonewalled completely. Completely. Good idea. Maybe we should put up a toll booth on 94. The tolls on 94? <laughs> that was Jimmy Kilby on 515. It'll guarantee no more tax increases. Are there, is there anything else, Mr. Wetzel? That's it. Okay. Motion. Oh, no more. Oh, uh, yeah, birthday boy. Thank you very much. Thank you for your wishes. I appreciate it. Uh, I, I really have no other comments this, uh, for this meeting. Uh, I have a roll. A roll I'm sorry. A request for a uh, senior a senior motion to adjourn, please. Motion to adjourn. A senior moment. Second. Second. Same by for, uh, made by Mr. Lynch. Seconded by Mr. Kadish. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.